Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe, and we're getting ready to go into the weekend before Thanksgiving, and markets uh, have actually not quite gotten ready for the holiday week just yet. I can assure you next week it's going to be uh, as holiday feeling as it gets around the markets. Uh, we They're only open half day on Friday, and when I say half day, it's like one-tenth of normal uh, Wall Street traders even coming to work, and and so you have this really abridged day Friday, and of course closed for Thanksgiving on Thursday. People leaving early Wednesday, so next week is going to be kind of muted. It is the case every single year Thanksgiving week. I've grown to not only be used to it, but to actually like it quite a bit. But then this week we seem to be making up for what they anticipate will be lost time next week. Significant amount of volatility this week, and you had for the last. Uh, let's call it two weeks. It was a little bit less than two weeks, but from the last couple of days of October into the first uh, eight, nine days of November or so, real significant reversal in markets. The big sell-off we experienced in October had reversed. At one point, about 80% of the drop in the S&P had been recovered, and then this week we've given a lot of that back. We're not back to the the lows we had been in a few weeks ago, at least not yet, but um this kind of uh, elevator volatility of real big spikes up followed by big spikes down and so forth, I, I expect will continue. And it's now, oh, it's over a month that we've been kind of uh, dealing with this, where a sort of 100, 200 point day um, is really considered a very low volatility day. And and more interestingly, and I sure hope that literally none of you who are watching this actually know this or care about this, because I want all of you to have better things to do with your life than watch the intraday movements of market, we, we know that probably some of you are not heeding my advice there. Obviously, I don't have that luxury. But one of the things that's very interesting right now is that what the markets do in the early hours of the day tells you absolutely nothing about what the markets will end up doing by the end of the day. That's not normal. I mean, it, it certainly we've always had days like that. But regularly speaking, as a kind of um, normal pattern, if the markets drop 100 points at the beginning of the day, they generally are going to be down on the day. And if the markets are up big at the beginning of the day, they generally stay up throughout the day. And that that isn't going to be 100%, but it's the norm. It's the majority of the time occurrence. Right now, it's 50-50. You have no idea what the markets will end up doing based on what they do early in the day. And for a guy who wakes up very, very early in the morning and is looking at overnight futures action and pretty much start watching the markets when I'm in California... I'm starting to watch the markets over two and a half hours before they open. And when I'm in New York, I start watching over five and a half hours before they open. And I've almost just gotten used to over the last roughly 20 years, seeing patterns for the day uh, set based on kind of what takes place in those early morning hours in the futures market with interest rates, with commodities, um, and of course, international equity markets as well. And, and right now, all those things are thrown out the window. We just have a lot of um, craziness, both in a technical level and just kind of on a sentiment-based uh, factor that that uh, when it rains, it pours would, in whichever direction. Um, it makes it very hard to have a sort of muted market day. I don't think there's anything actionable out of that. I don't think there's anything consequential to a regular investor, but it sets the tone for what the volatility environment may be. And, and so all that to say that the uh, market I don't see coming out of this funk until there's a fundamental catalyst, and the fundamental catalyst, if it's going to be a positive movement out, as opposed to another significant leg down, is very likely to be the announcement of a deal with China. And my belief is that a deal will come, not right away, it'll take a little time, but that when the deal comes, it probably won't be the permanent long-term paradigmatic shifting arrangement that would be truly spectacular for markets. I think you're going to get an interim deal uh, that will probably involve some kind of cosmetic discussion of both territories opening up new markets to one another, uh, modest concessions from the Chinese around trade terms, and and then um, hopefully something more substantive around intellectual pop property theft and then I think opening up a better trade uh, import scenario for uh, American agriculture energy into China. That's all very doable. It's not, it's not overhauling. It's not systemic. Um, it would be a big deal to markets. It would cool the water a bit. Um, and then I think longer term, we, we have 
too many other variables to be able to determine how that would play out. So all that to say that in the present environment, there's not a catalyst. We're not dealing with earnings news coming in that is really setting markets back. We're dealing with this combination of events, a Fed normalization, um, a technology sector that was way, way overcooked that's repricing and still repricing now, still hasn't found that bottom, a shift from growth to value. We have a significant amount of stocks that are making new highs, even as all this market turmoil is going on, because markets are shifting to bigger balance sheet names, uh, a little lower beta, less volatility, less correlation in, uh, uh, to the S&P, less leverage to the S&P. So th those are, are uh, I think, healthy moves, to be quite frank, uh, way overdue, but it doesn't give you an indication of where the overall direction of the market will be. And I don't know that investor really needs it. Um, I think that, that right now is a wonderful time to be very patient, very disciplined, and very content with the fact that you have a balanced asset allocated portfolio. So uh, in terms of the things that we're looking for, we're obviously watching around that China deal. There was a really big fight this week publicly between Larry Kudlow and Pete Navarro, two kind of opposing forces on the side of free trade within the Trump administration. Uh, certainly appears Kudlow has bested Navarro, at least in the president's era at this time. I take that as a very positive sign, both ideologically and in terms of the market. But in the meantime... Uh, I would not be making any big moves. We continue to want to shuffle some monies into the alternative uh, allocation of our client portfolios, and we're doing that tactically and, and slowly on a case-by-case -case basis. And that is sort of setting up our position to 2019 when we think we'll hit some peak earnings growth next year. Um, I'm going to leave it there for now. Uh, that's the broad lay of the land as I sit here middle of the day on Thursday yeah, S&P's up a little bit, Dow's down a little bit, but uh, overall the movement on the week has been negative. And so we'll see what kind of happens into the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, next week there will not be a video. There will be a DividendCafe.com uh, where we're going to do kind of some annual Thanksgiving reflections that we like to do. I don't think a lot of you like to read big market commentary uh, the week of Thanksgiving, and I know that I don't like to write it the week of Thanksgiving, and so we'll be in this together. But I do have some things I want to share um, it'll be a fun holiday week, and I hope uh, you have a great weekend and fight on.